Hi, welcome to Real Talk. Today I didn't really have a video planned out today. Um, wanted to talk about, you know, current events. Um, one thing that's been on my mind lately happened here where I live in Frederick County, Maryland. Um, a lot of people may have heard of, we have a county councilman here named Kirby DeLauder, who a while back decided that the newspaper was not allowed to print his name without his permission, and he was going to sue the local paper, the Frederick News Post, for printing his name without his permission. The whole freedom of the press thing seems to go over his head. Um, well, here locally, Kirby's back in the news because locally, our, our county council uh, approved a new ordinance stating that any elected official on the county council cannot, who has a company in Frederick County, cannot bid on county product, projects. You know, you think it's a good thing. It's common sense. It's, you know, an ethics issue. But Kirby DeLauder, you know, being, being himself, decided to escalate this issue. He, he said on Facebook that he was not going to donate to a local youth athletic program um, called Contactin Athletics. Um, he said he wasn't going to donate the, th the, the $1,000 that he normally donates due to this ordinance being passed, so he can't make money. You know, it's understandable if you're not going to make the money. If you, if you, that was your sole source of income was him getting, you know, county bids and that's how he was making all of his money with his construction company, that would have been fine. I think everyone would have been understandable. But instead, no. He hasn't had a, a county project in four and a half years since he took office the first time. So, it makes no sense. Why did he have to post a letter online where he, on the form, he wrote out that we should blame... The, I'm sorry, he didn't write on the letter that we should play. He said, bro, he told the leader of the athletic club to talk to the other council members because they were the ones stopping him from being able to donate his $1,000. Okay. And then he goes on a Facebook run how we, how it's the voters' fault because we elected, you know, the other council members that agreed with the ordinance and passed it. You know... As someone who, you know, I'm a paralegal student, um, I think, you know, ethically, this just keeps him in the clear, you know, ethically with this new ordinance. It's kind of, you don't want people questioning why you got a bid or if the county government's corrupt. That's something we don't need here in Frederick County. If it's bad enough, we have Kirby to louder. We don't need corruption charges. Um, but my thing is, if he hasn't had a county bid or had a county project in over four and a half years and he makes all this money from county projects but he hasn't had one in four and a half years where's all his money coming from if this is all he's worried about not being able to make money but yet up until now he was able to donate a thousand dollars every year to Kentuckian athletics how that money just certainly di suddenly disappear after the passing of the ordinance. You know, I think Kirby's taking things out of proportion. I think he's being a bit ridiculous. Um, another issue here in Maryland that I think some people are wondering, you know, some people aren't addressing, you know, because they don't want to come across as rude or anything. It's just something I've heard. You, It makes you wonder, do I think it was intentional? Do I think it was, this next issue was on purpose? I, who's, I can't judge right now. I don't think all the facts are together and we'll see. But right now, um, it made national news that our governor, Governor Hogan, uh, He's a Republican governor of Maryland, which tends to be a blue state. Um, was diagnosed with stage 3 uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Well, what I've been hearing and I've seen, seen online are people are wondering if 
he knew about his cancer when he was running for office. Because he ran for office and then about a year later while in office, he announced his diagnosis. And a lot of people out there are wondering, hey, you know, is he just using taxpayer money to get his treatment? Did he know the entire time that he had cancer? Um, I think that's something he would have to answer himself. I don't think it's up to the public to judge, really, but it's, it's something to make you wonder. Because um, if you look at it, typically, from what I've done my research on, on non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, is it tends to create a mass, cancerous masses in your body. Um, it typically starts under the diaphragm. So if he, that stage three, where people are wondering if he's had it for more than a year. So a year into his candidacy, well, a year into office, he's come out and said that he has this cancer, and people are wondering if, you know, he knew about it the whole time. If he had this potentially life-threatening disease when he ran for office, I think people are calling into question whether or not he had the ability to make sound judgment having the cancer and the mental effect having such a disease can cause. Um, but whether or not he had it, it's it's about his portrayal to the, you know, the voters of Maryland. Whether or not he hid his diagnosis during his run for the governorship, um, it's something Hogan's going to have to address. Um, My th so if anyone knows or has a way of finding out whether or not Governor Hogan had the cancer before he ran for office, you know, that'd be great to show information. But personally, it's not up to me to pass the judgment. It's for me to put forth and discuss things that, you know, I hear. I do you know, talk about a lot of things on Facebook, and it's just things people have spoken to me about. It's nothing that I'm throwing out there myself. Um, I mean, it's it's Maryland. You know, you don't hear a lot about Maryland. Um, other than apparently Chris Christie's coming to Maryland to meet with Governor Hogan for a fundraiser. And I really hope Governor Hogan's smarter than to back Chris Christie. But who knows? That's just a personal opinion. Um, things that go on in like small towns, like Frederick City, I live in Frederick City, which is the seat of Frederick County. Um, it tends to be pretty small, with small town politics. Nothing tends to be large. Like, the issues that happen all the time in Frederick City is, okay, what are we gonna do about traffic? What are we gonna do about bulk trash pickup? I mean, there are small things there are things in small town government that most people find ridiculous, but people make a big deal out of. Um, again, this goes back to my involvement uh, video. Learning the issues that, you know, are in your town is one way to find out what's going on um, and getting involved politically. I mean, it's just look for volunteer issues. You know, even if you move to a different, always... Everyone has Facebook, so your local Republican club, your local Democratic club, they're all going to have a Facebook page. You can always look them up the new areas you go to get involved. Um, but going back to small government and things that happen in small towns, like the fact that uh, Kirby, Kirby DeLauder. Kirby DeLauder is, I think, a blemish on Frederick County. Um... I think the way he handles some things, he's got out, he has a history of having outbursts at uh, county council meetings. Well, not county council meetings, before we, we just switched over to a uh, charter government. We used to have a board of county commissioners with a president. Now we have a uh, county, now we have a county council with uh, a county executive. Whereas before we had the county commissioners and there was a president in the county commissioners. Um, 
So back during the, his days as a county commissioner, he was known for having outbursts, walking out on meetings, being derogatory towards uh, speakers at meetings. I mean, there are a lot of videos on YouTube. If you type in Kirby, Kirby DeLauder, you'll find them. Um, I just can't get over the fact that he decided to take his, you know, his feelings towards his other council member and take it away from a youth group, a youth organization. You know, Catoctin Athletics is a, is a youth organization, which they've, backed, they've bounced back from him essentially calling him out on Facebook, posting, you know, a juvenile letter about how we need to thank somebody else because he can no longer make his money. You know, they've come up with a GoFundMe, which I will post the link to below in the comments. I'll post that link to that. They've done a GoFundMe, and they've raised double of what he said he normally uh, donates to him. Um, they've already raised $2,000 within 24 hours, which I think is great. Um, anything that you know, can help these kids, you know, with the sports, with, you know, when you take things away from kids, it, it doesn't help anything. Like when you, when governors cut budgets to education, when people don't donate to local sports clubs, I think, you know, it does affect children. Um, you know, my question, you know, to Kirby DeLauder would be, did you, you know, run for office for the possible per perks it could provide you, or did you actually go in to be a public servant? Because um, it's coming now, it's looking like you just went into office to be, you know, showered with the gifts that being in the public office can give you. Um, and then, it's just wondering why we let people like that into office like it'd be cool if this was his first time in office and this we were just finding this stuff out but Kirby has had a you know a cloud of path being in the, the county you know the county being on county commissioners and now being on county council I think now we're seeing it's it's Kirby it's not you know hey this is him you know he speaks his mind you know even though I'm pretty sure he views himself as the Donald Trump of Frederick County and I'm not talking in terms of money, I'm talking in terms of attitude. Um, but I think it's just something that the voters next time are going to have to weigh when it comes up again in 2000, let's see, is it 2018, I believe, is the next next election here in Maryland. It'll be the state election, and our, our county election coincides with the state election. Sorry, mumbo-jumbo. But... I think it's something that the voters are going to have to decide next time around. Um, I think, you know, it's a question, do people get into politics for the money? And my response to that is, there's only one way to find out. What if we challenged, you know, what if Congress made a new law that, you know, Congress, members of Congress, elected officials, you know, could only make, you know, 35000 a year. Okay, great, 35000 a year. Um, and the president, you know, makes 50000 a year. I think you'd weed out a lot of people who are in politics for the money versus being public servants. I think there'll be a lot more people wanting to better the country than there are in Congress now. Because I think most people are focused on the money. You know, make, you know, make the president's salary 50000 You know... Because, hey, he's the president, got to give him a little bit more than 35000 You know, this could, I mean, think about it. It's, it's going to weed out a lot of politicians. Um, people people told me, well, why would you do that for a full-time position? Personally, I don't think being, a, you know, a U.S. senator or a U.S. representative should be, I don't think you should be a full-time politician. I don't think you should be a career politician. I think it should be something you aspire to help people with. I don't think it should be because of the money. I think it's because you actually have ideas that will help people. Um, you know, comment below if you think that I'm delusional. Um, you know, or if you think 
Congress deserves the money they're making. Let me know why in the comments. Um, but I think there are a lot of things that need to be worked on in the country as it is now. Um, I always tell everybody, everybody I meet, you know, go out and vote. Learn about the uh, learn about the people running for office. Um, you know, right now the, we're still in the stage where we don't have, you know, the nominees for each party. We just have the people running on each side. You know, you've got a crowded Republican, you know, field and you've got, you know, a nice little group of ones on the other side. you got, you know, a lot of Republicans, a little bit of uh, Democrats. I think it's, what, 18 and 5? I think something like 18 and 5. I'd have to recount. Just going everything off the top of my head. Um, but I think now is when you start need to learning about who's running. And then the same thing with local politics. You know, in the beginning, get involved in the beginning with the election because you'll find people who, you know, have better ideas but they don't have the name recognition. Um, for example, in Maryland, uh, for the governor's race, um, there were three main Democrats and four Republican teams. It could have been more Republicans because there were quite there were more than the Democrats. Um, the three the, the three main Democrats was one was the former lieutenant governor, one was uh, the former well they're now now former lieutenant governor now former state's attorney and then a now former uh, state delegate. Um, I'm going to be straight up, I see myself as a progressive. Um, I kind of went with the state delegate because she had more progressive ideas.